Peace of the Lord, my brethren. I greet every, all the brethren who are connected, the church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the brethren to open their Bibles and the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 7. And we will begin to read from verse 24. Thus says the word of the Lord. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. To that point, my brethren, let's pray. Lord God, once again, we pray to you, asking for your grace, your blessing, for our meditation on your word. We're poor and needy and depend on your grace, on the direction of, of your spirit. Help us to apply your word in our lives. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. My brethren, this text that we just read speaks about the two foundations. It is the conclusion of the greatest sermon that the Lord Jesus preached and was registered in the Word. In fact, this sermon is known as the ser Sermon of the Mount. Uh, it begins all the way back on chapter 5 of Matthew and goes all the way to chapter 7. And the Lord Jesus, the Word tells us that He was on the mountain and the multitude there had arrived to hear him, and he began to teach this multitude and everything that he taught. Obviously, we don't have time to go over the entire Sermon of the Mount, but he taught many things, spiritual truths, truths for our lives, our human beings, our secular life here on earth, and he instructed his disciples and all of the ones who were listening to him and gave them words of life. And on the beginning of the sermon, he began speaking about the blessings. And he says things that if we were to go to confront with the society in the world today, uh, shows to us is very different. For example, he says, Blessed are the ones, the humble ones. The very beginning of chapter 5 and verse 3. Because from them is the kingdom of the heaven. My brethren, we live in a society that could have been defined as a society of me first. Me, myself, and I. And this teaching is so prevalent in the in today's society they bring consequences that are so bad and we see this when people only think on themselves and they become unhappy and this is the reason why so many marriages are destroyed and so many lives that are frustrated in the world and the world of the Lord teaches that we need to about the the bless, blessing of the humble. Being humble is a virtue. And when we come close to the Lord with a contrite and humble heart, He do not reject us. And we know because the Word itself tells us that His mercies, they are beyond the clouds, much farther than our comprehension. But pride can push us away from the Lord. The Bible says that also that the Lord is resistant to the proud. Verse 5, he says, Blessed are the humble because they will inherit their earth. And he teaches many truths about man's life here. And he concludes with those words that we just read. He says that everyone who hears these words and practices them will be compared 
to a prudent man that built his house on the rock. My brethren, we all want to be wise, right? We would like to be wise and to make choices in our lives of which we are not we would not repent later on. When I was young, I had many plans. Many times I didn't know what to choose, what profession to choose, what path to to walk in. It's very difficult. In any phase of your any phase of your life is difficult. But there is one truth that if we trust our way to the Lord and wait on Him from the moment when we were young, when we become old, we will look back and we will not be saddened with the choices of our lives because every promise of the Lord are truthful and faithful and they are fulfilled in the hearts of the ones who are humble and receive them as a child that believe in the Word of God and give creed to everything that is in the Word of the Lord like a child. And the Lord it takes pleasure in blessing and to reward His servants. And this character characteristic of receiving the Word of God, giving to it all the creed that it deserves, truthfully, this is the Word of God. It is a blessing for our lives. And this is re reflected in blessings perpetually in our lives. And we will see the blessing and the protection of God in our work environment, in our lives. And as we walk with the Lord, we see this truth very clearly. And as what the Lord said here, He compared this man that hears the word of the Lord, gives creed to the word of God, the words of the Lord Jesus, and gives creed to it. He compares to a man who edified his house, built his house on the rock. The rain came, and the flood came, and winds blew and beat on the house, but the house didn't was not destroyed, but it did not destroy because the foundation of the house it was founded on the rock. And this, my brethren, this makes all the difference in our lives. There is nothing that can give us security and st stability away from the Word of God. There is no treasure. There is no treasure in this life that could give us the security or the peace or joy and the blessings that the Word of God offers us freely to all the ones who receive it and put them in practice. And we didn't read here the ending, but the Lord speaks about another foundation. He compares man that hears the words of God but does not practice them. He compares that man to a man that is unwise, an imprudent man, a foolish man. He edified his house on the sand. So he edified his, his house on a foundation that was not safe, that was not firm as a rock. And we know that the rock speaks about the Lord Jesus. He speaks about the Word of God that remains forever. And the ending of that construction was very different than the former. He says that the rain came down, the flood came, the strong wind came, and they beat against the house, and that house did not survive, it crumbled. It was, the ruin was great. And that's what happened to us, my brethren, when we push aside the Word of God and begin to give importance to the things that the world tells, tells us. And, and it, this is very common. All of us, we are susceptible to be deceived or being sedu seduced by an advice from the world or an idea that the world may 
propagate. And this is a great risk for each one of us. But we have this foundation, which is the Word of God, firm and safe. And every time that we rest our trust on the Word of God, we will not be ashamed. And the Lord Himself in this sermon, we didn't read it completely, but He teaches us. He encouraged us to pray. pray ask and it will be given to you. Seek and we'll find. Knock and it will be open to you. And He said, Everyone that asks, you will receive. Whoever knocks, the door will be open for that person. And he compares to us. Which one of us, when a son asks us for bread, we, we would give them a rock? Of course not. Every father wants the best for his son. And we, who are imperfect, feel the flaws, knowing how to give good gifts to our own children, even more our Heavenly Father. We sing songs here about the great love of God, the great treasure that He gave us, which was to send the Lord Jesus to come here, to come down from His glory, take the shape of a servant just like us, and to give Himself, to be obedient to uh, death on, of, on a cross. Not because anything good that we could have done or that we could do to the Lord. But He is good. He had compassion on us. And He loved us. And the love of the Lord is permanent. We know that He alone went there to that cross and withstood the death on the cross. Six agonizing hours on the cross beside withstanding all the opposition and all the hostility of all the ones who wanted to crucify him, he would stood and because he loved us. Obviously, while we were still sinners, we were away from the Lord. Even so, the Lord loved us because of his grace. He elected us for salvation. He elected us to know the Lord Jesus and to have our lives transformed by him. And when we receive this word and give creed to this word and receive the word of God, the, prom the true promises and faithful promises that are in the word of God, they begin to be fulfilled in our lives. And this is not, my brethren, that the fact that we believe in God we are not going to have any difficulties or we are not going to go through afflictions. That's not true. Even the Lord Jesus said that. In the world, we will have affliction. But he also said, be of good cheer because I overcame the world and because he overcame, we will also be victorious, not because of our own strength, but because of the power of the Lord in us. Because the power of God is perfected on the weakness. So in our own limitation, in our difficulty, the power of our Lord is perfected in us. And He is powerful to give us the victory and to answer our prayers. And our role is this, is to persevere on the path that He has taught us. And to persevere in prayer, being patient, in the moments of tribulation, knowing that He has cared for us because He had already proven His love for us when He withstood the cross for love to us. And we, when we receive, He received Him and in spite of the tribulation difficulties, we receive Him, we have comfort, the blessing and the presence of the Lord that makes all the difference in our lives. And this is the difference. The main difference is eternity. Because nothing in this life can be compared to eternity. In our lives, they are like a, a short tail. We are born, we grow, and the older we get, we see how fast life passes. 
and how quickly our children grow and we pass. But etern eternity is forever. <coughs> so the promises that the Lord offers, they will last forever. They are treasures that cannot be compared to anything that the life can offer us. And best of all is that we do not need to do anything in order to deserve this treasure. Even if you, we wanted to deserve this treasure, we could never have been able to reach the proper merit and to receive this blessing from the Lord. But He freely offers that to us because He loved us. And in spite of our f flaws and our difficulties and of our trials, many times of our, our lack of faith and lack of perseverance in our prayers. He hears us and He blesses us and give us the victory. And everything that we need to do in order to reach this blessing is to give quid to the Word of God and to receive the Word of God and to put it into practice and not to be only listeners of the Word of God, but to put it into practice. When we do this, we begin to enjoy of all the fruits of this Word in our lives. And they are fruits for the life, for our lives, and fruits of blessings throughout our lives. Even though the world, the, and most of the time, they teach the opposite, the Word of the Lord is a secret for us to have a, a happy life under His protection, under His care. Everything that the Word of God teaches is to deliver us from evil, to deliver us from what is harmful to our lives. And when we receive, we receive this life. We see our home, our life, is our spiritual life, firm on the rock. The trials might come, they may go against it, but the house will remain standing, not because of the strength of the house, but because of the foundation, the firm and safe foundation that sustains the house, which is who is the Lord Jesus himself. That's the privilege that each servant has when they have access to the Lord, access to his word, and it is our responsibility to choose to follow according to His Word and practice His Word without going astray to the left or to the right, knowing that the Lord always has the best for us, the best for our lives. And every time that we give our way to the Lord, giving creed to the Word of God, we are blessed, greatly blessed, and much more than everything that we could have asked or even imagined, because the Lord is faithful and merciful. Amen, my brethren. We're going to praise the name of the Lord. We get another song, and later on, I will hand the word to Pastor Ronildo or Pastor Sabado for the closure of our service.
Oh, to God. My brand, peace of the Lord. I just like to share with the brand the gift that the Lord gave us. He said in a vision that the Lord was answering, especially the prayer of the sisters that are made on the the Wednesday meetings, the women meetings. The prayers that are made on behalf of the homes, on their on behalf of their family members. So, the Lord is giving this blessing, this assurance to those sisters that it is has not been in vain. The service that the Lord has revealed, a special service for the women. So surely, your prayer, what you have asked to the Lord, and you have been seeking the knocking at the door of grace, the Lord is listening to your prayer. And you will be a witness of this. You can, in the future, in women's service, testify of this promise of the Lord that is being fulfilled in your life, especially because the Lord testifies to the church and the Lord shows in a similar gift. It edifies all of us because it removes any doubt, any questioning regarding this God whom we serve because He's a God who's alive in our midst. And the Lord is also speaking about a young woman here in our midst. The Lord is showing the importance for her to choose in first place what comes from eternity. To choose in first place. It's a young woman, a youth, to choose in first place the things of the Lord. And we can add here that everything else will be added on to this young woman. Because doing like this, you will be acquiring treasures, not for this life, but an eternal treasure that uh, will never end. Amen. Let's pray, bring the service to close, and soon after the prayer, if you desire an assistance, we'll make ourselves available to you. We have the pastor, deacons, and ushers, and the sisters to pray for you. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Oh God, tonight, you want, once again, we praise your name, because your word spoke to our hearts. And we know, Lord, that it has been the food, and a spiritual food that has strengthened our bones, our spiritual bones, and that has strengthened, the Lord, the faithful church the one who has been prepared by your spirit to live with you in eternity. Lord God, tonight we want to thank you, Lord, for the gifts, for the songs that have been sang, the prayers that have been made, and especially, Lord, the prayers that have been answered to our women, Lord. Lord, we want to praise you because we know, Lord, that you are God that is alive a God that looked to us, a God that hears our prayers, and a God that is ready to extend His hand to bless us. We thank you, Lord, because to this day, you have blessed us. Receive this service in adoration to your name. It's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, in your name, we say that with the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, my brethren. The brethren can now open your microphones and greet one another. I'd like to thank the visit and the presence of the ones who are with us and the brethren from Houston and Marietta and also the brethren who are watching us on YouTube, and the remaining brethren that are surely with us. Peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen.
Paz do Senhor, querido. Paz do Senhor a todos. A paz do Senhor, irmãos. A paz do Senhor a todos. Paz do Senhor, bem. Paz do Senhor, irmãos. Paz do Senhor, já quero a paz do Senhor a todos. Paz do Senhor, irmãos. Paz do Senhor. Paz do Senhor. Paz do Senhor, pastor. Paz do Senhor, Tino. Você está trabalhando, né, rapaz? Trabalhando, eu estou dirigindo, mas eu estou aqui na igreja. Olha para frente, não vai olhar para o celular, não. 